this message. In fact, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallam, Ya ayyuhal rasul balligh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik O Messenger, convey what was revealed from your Lord. That command to Prophet Muhammad is a command to us. For us to fulfill what was his instruction. He was a messenger to the whole of humankind. But could he reach humankind? Could he himself as an individual carry that message until the last day? No. It is we who by fulfilling that responsibility fulfill the responsibility of Prophet Muhammad He carried the message to us. It is our duty to carry it to others. And this duty from an Islamic perspective as I said is an obligation. Of course obligations are divided into two categories. Obligations of the community and obligations of the individual. And that community obligation, if it is fulfilled by an individual, then it is no longer an obligation on the rest of the individuals of the community. This is what we call Fard Kifaya. I'm sure you're all familiar with that. A community obligation. Dawah is a community obligation. However, where there are not sufficient numbers of people fulfilling that obligation then it shifts now to each and every one of us it becomes an individual obligation what we know as fard ain the individual obligation and as one of the leading scholars of the 20th century had said sheikh bin baz he said at the time when there is a shortage of callers when evil is prevalent and ignorance dominates, da'wah becomes fard ayn on everyone according to their ability. For surely, in our time, there is a shortage of callers. Yes, there are certain groups, we know of a group by the name of Jamaat Tabligh, which is involved in calling people. However, the essence of the call of Jamaat al tabligh is a call to Muslims. Muslims come back and practice your Islam. That is the essence of their da'wah. And that is based on a philosophy that you need to clean up your home. However, the methodology of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was that he called non-Muslims to Islam throughout his life. People came to him from Yemen they came from other parts of the peninsula coming to him and he was carrying that message directly to them. He sent his own companions out, Mu'adh ibn Jamal and others to Yemen and elsewhere to carry that message to the non-Muslims. Though they were already Muslims in the peninsula. So that calling, to, calling non-Muslims to Islam remains an obligation on Muslims today. Not which has not been taken up by the mass of Muslims. It is something, for the most part, we have become very lax with. Many of us who are immigrants here to Canada, we came here for a piece of the Canadian apple pie. There's the American apple pie and we have the Canadian apple pie. So we came for a piece of it. And, you know, whilst we're here, we do gather together we build a few mosques, we set up a few schools, but the responsibility of da'wah we don't do. And the reality is that if we are not making da'wah to the people of this society, then they are making da'wah to us. And that is what's happening to many of our children going to schools here in this society, that the da'wah of this society has gotten them. They are being drawn in, sucked into the system. A system which unfortunately has become very corrupt. About which my brother Abdullah Hakim Quick was speaking earlier in Juma, That we need to stand up for that moral ideal. Call the society back to it. 
this is a responsibility on us. Some of us may say, well, I don't have very much knowledge about Islam. My knowledge is limited. Let the scholars do it. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, Balligu anni walaw ayah. Convey whatever you have learned from me, even if it be only a single verse of the Quran. A single verse of the Quran. How many of us don't know Qul Allahu Ahad? Is there anybody in the audience who does know it? Can you put your hand up? I don't see anybody. So if the Prophet ﷺ said, convey whatever you learn from me, even if it's a single verse, then you have the duty to convey Qul Allahu Ahad. Because Qul Allahu Ahad is what the world needs. Say, He Allah is unique. Ahad. He is unique. There is none like Him. Walam yakullahu kufuan ahad. There is nothing similar to Him. What is the problem of the world? But they, that they have taken individuals, the material society, as partners with Allah. Those who they worship besides Allah. Isn't that their problem? Isn't it the problem of Christianity that they have made a human being God or the Son of God? Isn't that the problem of Hinduism and all of the other isms that they have not understood this? Because the obligation to convey the message is, in a, is according to our level of knowledge, our ability. It is obligatory on us according to our ability. But lest some of you still think that this is just sunnah. Though I'm saying obligation, there seems to be orders from the Prophet ﷺ. Some people say, well, you know, the Prophet ﷺ ordered us to do many things, but they were just recommendations. So in case this doubt remains in our minds, Allah cursed those who hide knowledge in surah al-baqarah he said inna alladhina yaktumuna ma anzalna min al-bayyinati wal huda min ba'di ma bayyannahu lin nas fi al-kitab ulaika yal'anuhum Allah wa yal'anuhum al-la'inun indeed those who hide the clear messages and guidance that i have revealed after i've made it clear to people in the scripture those are cursed by Allah and cursed by all who would curse. Those are cursed by Allah and cursed by all who would curse. Meaning what? Meaning your neighbor, your classmate, your friend, non-Muslim, who you have known for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, with whom you have talked about everything under the sun. You have talked about your house, your car, education, your children, vacation, this weather. We've talked about everything, but you never said anything to them about Allah. How do you feel they are going to feel on the day of judgment when they stand before God? They're going to say, you know that person, oh Allah, give them double the punishment. They knew me all those years.